So my name is Gabby and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I wanted to take some time to talk about my gear for my 2022 Appalachian Trail through hike. As I'm getting closer to my start date, I'm feeling more and more excited and then also very nervous. If any of you guys watched my previous video, you know that my start date is more than likely changing and I'll probably be starting the trail sooner than I expected. Because I'm starting a little bit earlier than expected, I've made some updates to my gear just to keep me a little bit warmer while out on trail. I do plan on starting anywhere between mid-February to early March, so my gear may be more suitable for a colder weather hike than someone who's starting in April or May. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So before I start going through the gear that's in my pack, I just want to talk about the things that I'm going to be taking with me that are outside of my pack. So first off, I have my Lecky trekking poles. These are aluminum trekking poles, so they're a little bit heavier than carbon fiber trekking poles, but I also believe that they're more durable. I got the women's style, so the hand grips are slightly smaller than they would be for um, men. And I also went with the corkscrew grip just because I think they are more comfortable. Now installed on my trekking poles, um, I actually have a stick pick and this is what I'm going to use to vlog my through hike. Um, so right now you can see it's pretty dirty, um, but it's pretty simple. Um, all you do is screw a phone mount into this little um, piece on the bottom and then you just attach your phone. And then you can vlog by holding up your trekking pole just like this and the camera will be facing your direction. I did think about getting a tripod instead of going this route, but this route is lighter and I also think um, it's just going to be one less thing that I have to carry with me. So yeah, we'll see how this works out and I'll keep you guys updated on the stick pick and if it's a product that I can recommend for a through hike. So the next thing I want to talk about is the shoes I plan on wearing for my through hike and I plan on wearing the Hoka Speed Goat 4s. I've tried a few different pairs of shoes and they've all just given me blisters or my feet's just been really sore at the end of the day. And so far the Hoka's have been the best that I've tried. They have very thick padding so when you're hiking in these it's really hard to feel all the little rocks and they're really comfortable for long hiking. I have faith that these shoes are going to work for me but there's also a chance that I could end up changing them out on trail. Um, maybe if I develop blisters or if I have foot pain. I figure that I will start with these and if they don't work then I'll change them out as needed. I actually hiked the approach trail back in October in these shoes and it rained the whole entire time for two days straight and I wore these shoes and I didn't get a single blister, I didn't have any foot pain and everything worked out pretty well. Okay, so next I want to talk about the clothing that I plan on wearing for my through hike. I actually did a whole video on my clothing so if you guys want to go check it out that's going to be a lot more detailed than this video. But while I'm hiking, I plan on wearing this Patagonia fleece sweatshirt. Um, this is very warm. It may actually be too warm, um, but I'd rather be too warm than too cold. So I think I'm going to start with this considering my date is in February. So under my Patagonia fleece, I have this black base layer hiking shirt that I plan on wearing. Um, I actually just got this off Amazon around Christmas time and it's really soft and it's pretty warm and I think it's going to be a pretty comfortable addition for my through hike. Some things that I like about it are that it has a hood so it can help keep my head warm if I need it. It also has the little thumb holes so I can put my thumb through it if I'm wearing gloves and it'll just make it more comfortable and warmer. And then it also has a very large front pocket so this will be just a really good place to store um, extra snacks, my phone, or whatever else I may need throughout the day. So this little athletic pullover, um, it's a Tesla brand. It's T-S-L-A. I got it off of Amazon and I'll link to it down in the description just in case any of you all want to check it out. So as far as pants go, I plan on wearing the Columbia Omni Shield pants. Um, these help protect you from the sun. They're also not waterproof, but they are water resistant. So I've worn these in the rain before and they don't really get soaked. Um, the water just kind of beads up on the material and then just runs off. So I like these pants because they're really lightweight. Um, they're also really comfortable. 
and stretchy, so I think they're going to be pretty good for the beginning of my hike. So for socks, I plan on wearing the Darn Tough socks. Um, these are the Appalachian Trail socks. They're very cute because they have the little map of the Appalachian Trail on them. Um, I plan on wearing these while hiking and then I'm also going to bring another pair for sleeping. And then lastly, I have a lot of hair so um, I'm also going to be wearing a buff while I hike just to keep my hair out of my face and then also um, to reduce sweat and then also keep my ears warm. Okay, so that is everything that's going on the outside of my pack. Now we're going to go into detail on the things inside of my pack. Alright, so this is my backpack. It's very heavy right now. Um, this is the Osprey Aura AG50. So before I get into the details of everything inside my pack, I'm going to start by talking about everything that's on the outside. So on this side, I have a smart water bottle holder. Um, I just purchased this bottle holder off of Amazon. It was very cheap. It's probably not the lightest thing, um, but I think it's going to work pretty well for my hike. As far as water goes, I plan on using two smart water bottles and I'm going to screw my Sawyer Squeeze, which is actually in this pouch right here. I'm just going to screw it right on top and I'm going to drink it directly out of the bottle. On the other side, I have a bandana. Um, I got this bandana from Walmart and I only paid, I think, like $2 for it. Um, the main purpose of this bandana is just going to be to uh, honestly blow my nose when it's cold out or just wipe up any messes that I may have. So on this side, I have an REI rain shield pocket. So this rain shield pocket actually came with my boyfriend's um, REI backpack. Um, but he's not through hiking this year and he said that I can use it. So basically this little pocket just keeps everything inside of it nice and dry. So this is where I plan on keeping my cell phone and my AirPods while I'm hiking. Okay, so next we'll move on to the hip belt pockets. So in this side, this is where I'm keeping all the little essential items that I think I'll need throughout the day. So I have a chapstick. And then this is the little phone adapter for the stick pick that's on my trekking poles. Um, so when I want to vlog, all I have to do is take this out and then screw the bottom into the trekking pole screw. I also have hand sanitizer, which is definitely a must while on the trail. And then I also have this little Gerber multi-tool. So this multi-tool has a knife, it has scissors, and it also has a bottle opener. Um, so I think that'll be pretty helpful. I think the most useful part for me is probably going to be the scissors. So this hip belt pocket is actually empty. Um, this is the one where I plan on storing my smaller snacks throughout the day. Okay, so now we'll move on to the sides of the backpack and then we'll go to the front. So in this side pocket, this is currently where I have my Sawyer Squeeze right now, um, but I plan on getting another smart water bottle and I'm going to put it in this pocket right here. One of my smart water bottles is going to be just for plain drinking water and then the other one's probably going to be for Propel and flavored drinks. On this side of my backpack is where I plan on keeping the tent poles and the tent stakes for my Big Agnes tent. Okay, so now we're on to the front of the pack. So down here in this dry bag, this is actually my tent. So I have the Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2 tent. So the reason why my tent is on the outside of my bag is because this is a 50 liter backpack and I can fit everything in it that I have now just the way it is. Um, but if I wanted to put my tent inside of my backpack, I would have to add the brain, and the brain for this tent weighs about eight ounces. This backpack is already a really heavy backpack, so I figured that I could save some weight by taking off the brain and fitting everything in the body of the bag. So yeah, in this dry bag, um, like I said, I have my big eye in this tent. It all fits very nicely down inside of it. So 
So next I have my Zolio satellite communication device. So many people go with the Garmin and Reach Mini instead of the Zolio. Um, but one thing I really liked about the Zolio is that it tries to send its messages through um, Wi-Fi, cell service, and then it resorts to satellite as a last resort. So if any of you are unfamiliar with the Zolio or like the Garmin InReach Mini, the main point of them is to be able to alert emergency responders if you need help and you don't have cell phone service. Open up this little SOS flap and then press the SOS button and this will get you into contact with first responders. This is great because there's a lot of parts on the Appalachian Trail that don't have cell phone service and if I find myself in a dangerous situation, I can contact authorities and let them know that I need help. The Zolio also does live tracking, so for my family and friends, I plan on sending them a tracking link so that they can see my location at all times. So now we'll go into my mesh front pocket. I'm first going to unzip these just so I have a little bit more space. So inside here, first of all, I have my Osprey pack cover. Um, so the point of the pack cover is pretty much just to try to keep your pack as dry as possible. It's definitely not perfect, but when I've used it, um, it's kept everything inside my pack dry. I do still plan on lining my backpack with a contractor bag so that everything in there stays nice and dry. Um, but I still think a pack cover is nice to have if you have a backpack that's not water resistant because if this backpack were to get wet, it would probably end up weighing twice what it weighs right now. And I don't really want to carry that extra weight. So inside the front pocket, I also have my toilet bag. Um, so I just want to keep this readily accessible for when I need it. Um, but I have the Deuce number two uh, ultra light trowel. And then I also have some wet wipes in here and some toilet paper. In addition to my bathroom kit, I also keep my rain jacket in the front pocket. Um, that way if it rains, it's really easy to get to and I'm not digging through my bag to find it. So this is the Frog Togs rain jacket. Um, you can get these for $20 off at Amazon and they're really lightweight. Um, this rain jacket only weighs about 5 ounces. I have heard from some people that they've had issues with durability. Um, I've not tested this rain jacket out too much, so we will see how it works on trail and I will let you all know. Alright, so now we will move on to the inside of my backpack. So the very first thing I have in my backpack is my Sea to Summit 20 liter food bag. So right now this bag doesn't have any food in it, but when it does, I expect it to be um, pretty big, bulky, and heavy. So right now I don't have any food in here, but I do have some cooking essentials. So the very first one is my pot. This is the Tokes Lightweight Titanium 550 milliliter cook pot. This cook pot is a little bit smaller than I think what some through hikers would carry. But I don't really plan on cooking much in my pot. I mainly plan on boiling water and then dumping it into um, either a Ziploc bag or a mountain house meal or something like that. This is one of the first pieces of gear that I bought when I started preparing to go backpacking. And if I could go back and do it over, I would have bought the 750 milliliter pot instead of the 550 milliliter pot. So inside my cook pot, I have some matches. Um, these are mainly just in case my lighter quits working for some reason. I also have a lighter, so this is super useful for um, getting your stove going. I also have a small microfiber towel from REI. Um, this is mainly just to clean up any messes that I may make while eating or wipe down my tent. And then I have the BRS stove. You can get these little BRS stoves off of Amazon for about $15. Um, they're really lightweight and easy to use. All you have to do is stir this little screw part down into your fuel and then this is how you control um, the amount of fuel that the stove is getting. So because I'm carrying a stove, I'll also be carrying a fuel canister with me at all times. Um, right now I just have a little one from MSR. 
And I'm keeping it in this Ziploc bag, just in the off case that for some reason it does leak. I've never had that happen to me, but I do know that it's possible. Some other small things that I have in my food bag is my Sea to Summit collapsible cup. So this is perfect for drinking coffee or hot chocolate or tea. I could drink those hot drinks out of my cook pot, um, but I just figured it would be nice to have something small to drink out of, and this only weighs, I think, about two ounces. In addition to that, I also have my Sea to Summit um, spork. Um, this isn't really the long handle version, and I think if I were to buy another one, it would have a longer handle than this one. And then lastly, I have some paracord. The purpose of this paracord will be to hang my bag so that no little critters can get into it. Um, one thing I still do need is a little rock sack. I haven't gotten that yet, but I think I may have some things here at home that could work. So the next thing I have is my little electronics bag. Um, this is probably one of the heaviest things in my bag. Some things I have in here are my Garmin watch charger, um, my iPhone cable, I have my headlamp. So this is a gear light headlamp. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It's pretty heavy and it uses batteries. I also plan on carrying three AAA batteries with me. So just in case the batteries in this die, I won't be stranded without a headlamp. I also have my Anchor fast charging dual port wall plug. So I plan on using this to charge up my devices while I'm in town. Next is my battery bank. This is the Inu 20,000 mAh. It has two outputs and then also two inputs. Um, it also has a small flashlight on it, so if for some reason my headlamp dies and I'm in my tent at night, I'll be able to see. It's a very nice power bank. Um, it shows you the percentage, how charged it is, so that'll be pretty easy to keep up with. Um, the only thing that's bad about it is this power bank weighs about 13 ounces, so it is pretty heavy. Because it's such a big power bank, I do get about 5 or 6 phone charges out of it, which is pretty impressive in my opinion. I do have a smaller 10,000 mAh anchor battery, um, but I do think I'm going to bring this one instead since I'm vlogging. And lastly, I have the little charging cord for the power bank. So next in my pack, I have my clothes bag. Um, right now, this is in a Ziploc bag, and I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it in a Ziploc bag or if I'm going to upgrade to a dry bag. So inside this bag, I have an extra pair of socks. Um, these are darn tufts, and I plan on wearing these while I'm sleeping at night. I also have some gloves. Um, if you watched my clothing video, I talked a little bit about these gloves. Um, they are a little bit too big for me, so I think I may be changing them before I start my hike. I also have my smart wool headband, so I plan on wearing this just to keep my ears warm. My ears get really cold when it's cold outside, and it actually can be painful, so I think wearing this is going to be really important in the early months. I also have a synthetic race shirt. Um, I plan on wearing this shirt to sleep in. There's really nothing fancy about it. And then I have a pair of fleece leggings that I'm going to sleep in. I also plan on keeping an extra pair of ex officio underwear on me. These underwear are super lightweight, breathable, and really comfortable for hiking. So next up is my puffy jacket. This is the Patagonia Synthetic Puffy Jacket. I've had this jacket for a few years now and I really love it. It always keeps me really warm when it's cold outside. I don't really plan on hiking much in this jacket unless it gets really cold. I mainly plan on wearing this jacket to sleep in or when I'm packing up in the morning, um, mainly when I'm at camp. Okay, so this is my first aid slash toiletries kit. Okay, so this is my little hairbrush that I bought off of Amazon. It's really lightweight and small and compact. It's really important for me to be able to brush out my hair every day, so it's really important for me to bring a little hairbrush. Next, I have a small bottle of toothpaste. I heard that you can get little toothpaste tablets, and that's something that I may look into for the future, but for now, I'm gonna stick with this little bottle. I also have a small stick of deodorant. 
I know that many of you may judge me for having this, um, but I think that having this could be good for my mental well-being on trail. Next I have some band-aids. These are pretty self-explanatory. If I get a cut or um, anything else on the trail, I'll put one of these on. In addition to band-aids, I also have this small Neosporin to go. So if I do find myself with a cut, this is super easy to use. It's actually just like a little spray bottle, so you don't even have to touch the band-aid to put it on. I'm also carrying some Q-tips. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, they're mainly just to clean my ears as I feel fit. Here is my miniature travel size toothbrush. Um, very small, very lightweight. So next I have these little aqua tabs. I do plan on bringing the Sawyer Squeeze, but I think that I want to carry these as a backup option in case that breaks or something happens to it. The Sawyer Squeeze also doesn't filter out norovirus, so if I hear that norovirus is going around on the trail, I may start treating my water with these tablets. So I am going to be carrying a small bottle of wilderness soap from Sea to Summit. Um, this is highly concentrated biodegradable soap, so you can just use a very tiny amount and it does a pretty good job. I do think it's important to wash your hands as much as possible on trail, um, just to avoid getting sick and it's just more hygienic in general. So next I have some Gold Bond Aloe Lotion. Um, I think if I end up dropping anything, it's probably going to be this, but I think it could be nice to have some lotion with me every day. So I also plan on carrying a small packet of wilderness wipes, and the main point of this is to just wipe your skin down at the end of a long day just to get rid of the sweat and the dirt. This is another thing that I could see myself dropping or just not replacing once I use them, and that's mainly because I have the camp soap and I don't really think I'm going to need both. And then lastly, for my first aid kit, I have just a few medications that I think could come in handy on the trail. So the first one is Pepto-Bismol, um, and I just put these medications in little Ziploc bags. I wrote what they were, and then I put some small instructions on them. The next one is Tylenol. And then lastly, I have some Benadryl just in case I need it. Okay, so that is it for the first aid kit, and now I'm going to keep going. So next I have the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. If any of you all watched my Big 3 video, you know that originally I had a Thermarest Pro Lite sleeping pad. I decided to switch to this pad because many of you commented and said that my other sleeping pad wasn't going to be warm enough, and I could not agree more. So this is the women's version of the Neo Air X Lite and it does have a slightly warmer R value than the regular version. So I expect this sleeping pad to keep me very warm. I also think it's more comfortable than my other sleeping pad and it definitely packs down a lot smaller. Just for comparison, here is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite beside the Thermarest Pro Lite sleeping pad. So as you can see, it's definitely a lot smaller. So next I have the Sea to Summit Thermalite Fabric Reactor um, Compact Sleeping Bag Liner. So I actually just picked this up at Outdoor 76 today in Franklin, North Carolina, and I decided to add this sleeping liner to my sleep system just because I am starting earlier than expected and I don't want to worry about being cold at night. So this sleeping bag liner adds up to 20 degrees, which I definitely expect to keep me nice and warm. While I was out Outdoor 76, they also gave me this buff for free. So if you are a through hiker, they give you this really cool buff. Um, so definitely be sure to stop in there. It's in Franklin, North Carolina. So next I have the Sea to Summit Arrows Pillow. This is the ultralight version and I believe this little pillow only weighs about two ounces. On my first backpacking trip, I tried to go without a pillow and I just found that it was super uncomfortable and I thought a pillow was just a luxury item, but for me it's definitely something that I need to sleep better. Last but not least is my Enlightened Equipment uh, Revelation Quilt. So this is a 20 degree quilt and it's synthetic and I got it in the regular width and the short version. This quilt weighs about 30 ounces and it's super comfortable to sleep in at night. Before having this quilt, I did have a mummy bag 
And while I do think it was warmer, I got too claustrophobic in it, and being that claustrophobic made it hard for me to sleep at night. I do still have that sleeping bag, and it is a little bit warmer than this quilt, so if it gets down to really cold temperatures, then you may see me camping with that mummy bag instead of this quilt. But most of the time, this is going to be my main sleeping bag. Alright guys, so that is it for this video. I will link all of my gear in the description, so if you want to check any of that gear out, feel free to use those links. Like I said before, it's getting closer and closer to my start date, and I'm really excited. I can't wait to get out there. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, please like and subscribe. Bye!